When we think of technology and space travel, the first name that comes to our heads is Elon Musk. And now, in his bid to colonize Mars, Elon Musk and his company SpaceX have developed the Raptor 2.0 engine. So, what is this engine and what does it do? Stick around till the end of the video as we explore these questions and more. The Raptor engine, a full-flow staged combustion cycle FFSCC engine that burns supercooled liquid oxygen and supercooled liquid methane CH4, will power SpaceX's Starship, the company's next generation spaceship. It is the third FFSCC engine ever to be created and the first to leave the test stand. The Raptor engine takes advantage of the very favorable FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. 33 Raptor engines will be packed into this super heavy, which is the initial stage of Starship. There will be 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. As SpaceX continues to improve the Raptor, this number is projected to go down in the future. Six engines are now housed in the second stage Starship. The three engines consist of three vacuum optimized non-gimbling and three sea level gimbal engines. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, has also remarked that after the ship's length is extended, three additional vacuum optimized engines will probably be added. There is no evidence to indicate that the materials used to make Raptor have changed between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. Raptor is made of SpaceX's proprietary SX500 alloy, copper, aluminium and steel alloys. The engine uses a little bit of 3D printing, but SpaceX is working to eliminate as much of it as they can because it is impractical to scale, expensive and slow to produce. The Raptor's ability to gimbal 15 degrees on the Y and Z axis, which is necessary for Starship's flip and burn landing, is one of its most amazing features. The RS-25 gimbals to 12.5 degrees, whereas the SpaceX's Merlin engine gimbals to 5 degrees on the first stage, making a range of 15 degrees quite wide. The first Raptor 2 was first seen around the start of 2022 and it signaled the end of Raptor 1. Raptor 2 appeared to be almost unfinished in comparison to the first Raptor because a lot of the engine's plumbing and sensors had been removed giving it a much more modern appearance. In order to track pressure and temperature throughout the Raptor's plumbing on the original Raptor, while SpaceX was learning how to manage the engine, a very high number of development sensors were required. Plumbing was also made further simpler by combining numerous valves into valve plates. In order to achieve its aim of eliminating all engine shroud from the booster, which would reduce the booster's bulk by about 6 tons, SpaceX has removed a significant portion of these components, making the engine more heat and flame resistant. This exemplifies Musk's mantra that the best part is no part. The removal of torch igniters from the primary combustion chamber of Raptor 2 is another modification intended to reduce the mass of the engine even more. Instead of using extra torch igniters, the main combustion chamber's high temperature and pressure cause the well-mixed hot oxygen gas and hot CH4 gas to act hypergolic. Additionally, Raptor 2 features fewer flanges than Raptor's first iterations. When parts need to be swapped out during the prototype, flanges are quite useful, but they add mass and raise pressure losses throughout the engine so SpaceX had to reduce the number of flanges. SpaceX hopes to remove all flanges from Raptor 2.5, which will further increase thrust to 250 tons and debut on Rocket 12, now that the design is more stable. Opening the throat, which increased thrust allowing more propellant to pass through the engine, was the most significant modification in Raptor 2.0. This modification helps to decrease the expansion ratio, that is, the ratio between the area of the nozzle exit and the area of the throat. The nozzle exit diameter on Raptor 1 and Raptor 2 
is exactly the same and the remainder of the engine is basically the same size. Despite this, Raptor 2 weighs 1,600 kilograms compared to 2,000 kilograms for Raptor 1, making it substantially lighter. The MCC pressure of the Raptor 2 rocket engine is the greatest MCC pressure ever at an incredible 300 bar, up 50 bar from the Raptor 1. The Russian RD-180, which operates at 267 bar pressure, held the previous record for the highest MCC pressure. Raptor has acquired a large amount of thrust as a result of the wider throat and high chamber pressure. Raptor 1 produced 185 tons of thrust, whereas Raptor 2 produces 230 tons of thrust. The drawback of widening the throat is a 1% drop in ISP. Raptor 1 had an ISP of about 330 seconds whereas Raptor 2 has one of 327 seconds. Even though the exhaust velocity drops, the boost in thrust dramatically improves the booster's efficiency by lowering gravity drag. The first 9.8 meters per second squared of acceleration are entirely devoted to evading the gravitational pull of the Earth. Only 20% of the thrust is used to accelerate the vehicle at 0.25 g. If the thrust to weight ratio is 1.25 to 1. This means that 80% of the thrust is lost fighting gravity. This infinitely increases the net work done on the vehicle despite only having 25% increase in thrust over a TWR of 1 to 1. When the TWR is increased to 1.5 to 1, 60% of the thrust is lost to gravity and the remaining 33% works on the vehicle. This increases the effort done on the vehicle by 100%, even if the increase in thrust is just 16%. At liftoff, Raptor 1 would have a TWR of roughly 1.25, whereas Raptor 2 would have a TWR of 1.5. The 1% decline in ISP is not nearly as dramatic as the 100% increase in work completed at the beginning of the flight. Numerous advantages result from this, including a reduction in the distance the booster is traveling downrange at the end of its burn, which lowers the fuel requirement for the booster's backburn. Musk's main objective is for Raptor's cost per tonne of thrust to be less than $1,000. As a result, Raptor has to cost around $250,000 to manufacture. With this objective in mind, it is obvious that SpaceX will keep making Raptor simpler to construct and less expensive, including removing all flanges from Raptor 2.5 and minimizing the use of 3D printing in the manufacturing process. With an MCC pressure of 330 bar, Raptor 2.5 is expected to boost the thrust of Raptor to 250 tons significantly. Additionally, SpaceX is working to eliminate throat film cooling from the engine completely. There are a number of ways SpaceX can do this, like adding more head-in film cooling or running the MCC at a higher fuel density. Currently, SpaceX is examining whether the trade-off of eliminating throat film cooling would be advantageous. Overall, it is obvious that Raptor is still in its early stages. The engine will continue to develop as SpaceX flies more, manufactures more, and tests more, just like what it did with the Merlin engine. So why exactly is Elon Musk so bent on developing new rocket engines? Apart from his craze for invention and innovation, we know that Elon Musk also has a lifelong zeal to make Mars habitable for human beings. And for that to happen, he and SpaceX need to make sure that they can make space travel as efficient as possible and at a very affordable price. The chances that they can pull this one off are very low, but then again, this is Elon Musk we're talking about. If anyone can do it, then it's surely him. After the prototype rocket underwent a series of testing and was sent back to SpaceX's South Texas Starbase rocket plant, the company has now started installing new Raptor 2 engines on Super Heavy Booster 7. SpaceX could have started testing Booster 7 with as few as one to three Raptor engines fitted 
and added more as confidence increased to reduce risk. However, it looks like SpaceX is willing to risk losing 33 brand new Raptor 2 engines all at once in exchange for the chance of a significantly quicker test campaign. In other words, if the process starts with all 33 engines already mounted, Booster 7 might be ready for a flight a lot quicker, assuming there are no significant surprises during static fire testing. Raptors, heat shields and aero covers for Booster 7 will be simpler to install back at the construction site. It's unclear how long it will take SpaceX to assemble a heat shield over each of the 33 Raptors, attach them and complete the rest of Booster 7's assembly. The Ship 24 Starship, which is the first in line to launch on Booster 7, is currently being assembled in a neighbouring assembly area by SpaceX. Ship 24 is also improved and SpaceX appears to be close to completion. What do you think about SpaceX and Raptor 2.0?